of the great figures in psychology, perhaps Sigmund Freud is the most important. Fraud, the one who developed psychoanalysis, a method through which an analyst and facts and conscious conflicts based on the free associations, dreams, and fantasies of the patient. His theories on child sexuality, libido, and the ego, among other topics, were some of the most influential academic concepts of the 20th century. The question is, does childhood experiences really have a great influence on our lives as an adult? Does it really shape our personality? Those are the questions that we all want to know the answer. But how? Good day everyone, I am Jasmo Vicente and today we are going to dig deeper into the real world of the greatest, the known founder of psychoanalysis, his life his hardships, his education, his works, and contributions to the big world of psychology. Now, let's talk first about his early life. What was the life of Sigmund Freud back then, and his adventures before he achieved his title to be one of the famous and well-known psychologists? Sigmund's glamour fraud on the sixth day of May in the year 1856 in the town of Freiburg in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which is known as the Republic in the present. He was the first child of Jacob and Amalia Freud. When he was four years old, they moved to Vienna and lived in the place where they can only afford, the Leopoldstadt slum. At the age of nine, Freud began attending school and became the head of the class. He became a passionate reader and mastered several languages. In 1873, he graduated at Sproul Gymnasium and was faced with the questions of what to study. He was confused of what to take among the field of academics, medicine, and law. Sooner decided to take medicine at the University of Vienna. As a medical student and a young researcher, Freud's research focused on neurobiology, exploring the biology of brains and the nervous tissue of humans and animals. He also became a lab assistant to one of his professors, performing research on the nervous systems of lower animals such as fish and eels. In 1882, Fraud became engaged to marry Martha Bernays. The couple had six children. Fraud went to Paris in the late 1885 to continue his studies about neuropathology with the pioneering neurologist Jean Martin Charcot. He began to receive referrals from other physicians to treat their patients having hysteria, who did not improve with their treatment. Fraud used hypnosis and encouraged his patients to talk about their fast while he wrote down everything they say. What an amazing life! I can clearly imagine how Fraud grew as a human because he was so much different. So, after we ran through the early life of Sigmund Freud, now let us move on and capture his notable theories and works. Freud gained experience as a psychoanalyst. He developed the concept of the mind as an iceberg, 
noticing that a major portion of the mind, the part that lacked awareness, existed under the surface of the water. He referred to this as the unconscious, while the upper part, referred as conscious, were all the contents of our mind that we actively think of belongs. In the middle part of the iceberg is where the preconscious lies. Hey James, you had a fun not to eat that today because of your tonsillitis. Understood? Alright, ma'am. Both of you, stop fighting. Eve, let's wait for your mom. She will come back home in 10 minutes. Then kindly ask for her permission before you can get what you want, okay? Eid is based on Flesher principle and resides completely on the unconscious level, while superego is based on ideal principle that began to form at the age of 4 to 5 years and resides in the preconscious level of our mind. The ego, the mediator, is based on the reality principle and resides in all levels of awareness. Sigmund Freud became an author of the following books. Above so many psychologists all over the world, was one of the most influential. He was a seminal Russian psychologist who is best known for social cultural theory. He believed that social interaction plays a critical role in children's learning. Imitation, guided learning, and collaborative learning all play a significant role in this theory. And to better understand him and his eminent works, join me as I wonder and open the pages of life of Vlad Vygotsky. Vlad Vygotsky was born on November 17, 1896 in Orsha, a city in the western region of the Russian Empire. He attended the Moscow State University where he graduated with a degree in law in 1917. Bigotsky studied a range of topics while at the university, including sociology, linguistics, psychologists, and philosophy. However, his formal work in psychology did not begin until 1924 when he attended the Institute of Psychology in Moscow. In 1925, he completed a dissertation on the psychology of art but was awarded his degree in absentia due to an acute tuberculosis relapse that left him incapacitated for a year. Following his illness, Vygotsky began researching topics such as language, attention, and memory with the help of students, including Alexei Leontiev and Alexander Loria. It is indeed a wonderful life that Lev Vygotsky has. How soft he is! Because despite of the challenges, especially in health, Vygotsky did not end his studies, but he pursued more to have a degree and be awarded in various achievements. Now, let us move on to Vygotsky's career and remarkable theories in such aspects of psychology and child development. Vygotsky was a prolific writer, publishing six books on psychology topics over a 10-year period. 
Wow! One of the famous theories of Vygotsky was the zone of proximal development. But how does Vygotsky define the theory? So according to him, the zone of proximal development is the distance between the actual developmental level as determined by independent problem solving and the level of potential development as determined through problem solving under adult guidance or in collaboration with one more capable peers. Also, according to him, zone is the gap between what a child knows and what they do not yet know. How deep is your mind, Bigotsky? However, I am sure that no one can ever forget the next theory, the sociocultural theory. Lev Vygotsky suggested that human development results from a dynamic interaction between individuals and society. Through this interaction, children learn gradually and continuously from parents and teachers. However, this learning varies from one culture to the next. It is important to note that Vygotsky's theory of sociocultural emphasizes the dynamic nature of this interaction. Society does not just impact people. People also affect the way society works. What a poignant idea, Vygotsky. But since then, on the 11th of June by the year 1934, the influential person in psychology, Lev Vygotsky, was not able to survive tuberculosis and pass away at the age of 37. Learning is more than the acquisition of the ability to think. It is the acquisition of many specialized abilities for thinking about the variety of things. We are all glad to see you spending time on watching this video. Little discover. May you continue to know more the theories regarding child's development and the amazing persons behind this. May you always fall in love with learning and exploring new things. I am Jezebel Vicente and this is Hashtag We Discover. Now signing off for today. See you next week.